We've got a new brand of golf balls here in the THP Tech studio from Piper Golf. Uh, there are three different balls in front of us here. I'm gonna walk through a couple of the different variances between the three and give you some price points. And then we'll go and hit a few in the hitting bay and see what comes of it. First of all, it is Piper Blue here. Uh, this is designed for a five to 15 handicap. It is a three piece Serlin cover with a 332 dimple design. The concept here is a lower spin rate for pure straight shots. I uh, had a chance to actually hit these on the golf course, had some fun with them earlier today. Um, it looks like these are designed for that uh, in between 90 and 105 mile an hour with your driver, about seven iron 150. Uh, so trying to limit the slice and hook design here. And that's again, Piper Blue here in the middle. Great looking uh, alignment aid element on there. Uh, price point on that one, I believe is 20, uh, 19.99. Moving on there, we're looking at a three piece urethane cover uh, designed for the zero to 12 handicap. This is Piper Black. Uh, the intent here is a boosted distance and stable flight uh, with a high spin rate for maximum playability. So this is in your uh, 100 plus range with your driver, hitting the seven iron at about 165 or more. Uh, and the goal here is shaping the shots. And the price point on that one is actually $23.99. And again, that's a three piece uh, urethane cover. Moving on finally to Piper Yellow, as you can see here at $27.99. This is a four piece urethane cover uh, designed for a handicap of seven or less uh, with a swing, suite, swing speed of 100 plus with a driver. Again, hitting the seven iron more than about 165 yards. And the intent here is extreme distance and higher flight. And the idea is softer feel with enhanced greenside control. Uh, I think the best thing to do now is take them into the hitting bay, hit a few shots. I'm interested to know all of you out there, have you heard of Piper Golf before? Are you familiar with this product? And are you into that sort of uh, direct to consumer concept? All right, here we are in the hitting bay talking about Piper Golf's new golf balls. We got blue, we have gold, and we have black. I've got James here on the sidelines. I'm gonna hit a few shots with each one. We're starting with Piper Blue. And James, this is kind of an interesting one because for me personally, I'm never really that handicapped guy. I'm not super worried about that. I'm worried about the lowest spin possible as I've always been a high spin guy. I think you played with me enough to know that's pretty fair. Absolutely. And it's kind of an interesting take for them to take on this. Um, talking about this one with the blue that we're gonna start off with being in that five to 15 handicap range. Uh, but they also base things off of what seven irons do. So the recommendation here is uh, if you hit a seven iron more than 150, which is, which is an interesting pathway to go about. Yeah, well, I have an eight iron here, um, trying to chase that lower spin. This is a Serlin cover. So at 1999, let's see what we do. Struck pretty well right there. So. Like I said, James, I'm chasing low spin. This is an eight iron for me. And an eight iron goal for me is typically that less than 8,000. We did not see that here. It might've been more me. I'm assuming the peak height's pretty high. The numbers are pretty good. Numbers do look pretty good. Whenever we're talking about coming in about 8,600 spin. So that's, that's kind of an interesting one to see out of this, given the design. Hmm. I think best thing to do is hit a couple more and, and see what we get. Okay, so a little bit better move there, James. Chasing that hole a bit here, buddy. Oh, Not the first that. one in the studio, though. Look well, that. that's a lot better at 7,800. It'll show up on the screen for you here in a second. I definitely put a better move on that. Let's say impact really helped on that one. Mm -hmm. You can see the spin drop. You so, can pick up a little speed off of it, too. What's, there's some other information about the Piper Blue. What else can we describe? There's a couple things at the top of the box that really I mean, support the I mean, expectations that you should see. Yeah, they're big on with this one talking about extreme distance and a stable flight for those golfers who tend to battle a slice or a hook, which that comes back to what they talk about with spin and the Serlin cover and what should happen. Uh, so it's interesting to see the numbers off of that. Uh, we're, again, this, this might be a me thing today, but we're up there. Uh, and it'll be nice, since we're hitting all three balls, it'll be nice to draw a little bit of comparison to the three as we go. Uh, I'll probably hit one more with this, James. I think it makes a lot of sense. Again, it's up there in that spin range. 
One of the interesting things they talk about, Dan, is they talk about what score you shoot with these golf balls. I mean, what are your thoughts on that in, in choosing a golf ball? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I've always been the person who says, get what you can play that suits your game and don't worry too much about the score. Uh, but I can understand that I'm in a fairly small minority when it comes to that. Yeah. I think that's pretty fair. I do. And I mean, when you're talking about a Sterling golf ball, one of the things they say is that they're looking at golfers in the 80s to the low 90s. So that kind of fits that mold. Yeah, I would say we, at the very worst, have a baseline for the others at this point. Definitely a good um, little sample there. Three of them dead nuts in the same number, which could be me today. But uh, I think at this point, we'll transition to, I believe, probably Piper Black, yep. which I think is a three-piece urethane. As we walk through, is again, 8,700. We have our baseline. And pretty tight dispersion too. I'm, I'm not upset about that from a sirloin cover. No, not sirloin at all. Sirloin cover. I, I love to call it a steak for some reason. <laughs> so no, for the design of the golf ball, I mean, I think we saw a lot of what we want to. It'll be interesting to see the other two next to it as we change covers. Yeah. So we're switching to Piper Black at this point, James. And this is our three-piece urethane. Three-piece urethane. Um, 332 dimple design off of it. Their big uh, talking point on this one is boosted distance and a stable flight with a little bit softer feel, uh, which based on them should help with greenside control. Interestingly, another thing they discuss is a higher spin rate for playability uh, for the golfer that wants to try to work the ball. So it'll be interesting to see what the numbers do here okay. as we take this sample. Yeah, it's interesting moving from Serlin to urethane and trying to get a real baseline after hitting only a couple shots. Uh, you did see the number, the spin number that you will see pop up on the screen here, folks. Ooh. It did jump a bit. So we are higher up there. Ball speed's relatively similar. And I'm kind of surprised by that because I kind of turned that one over. I figured it'd be a little bit more uh, jumpy. Let's hit it again. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit heavier than I'm used to from the rest of them, but that was really well struck for me. One of the interesting thing here, things here, Dan, is uh, we hit the blue, and the blue they talk about a 5 to 15 handicap. When you come to the black, uh, their criteria for it is 0 to 12, which is quite a range. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to how they get to 0 to 12. Uh, a little bit of a spoiler coming up here that uh, gold is the intent is 7 or below. Mm -hmm. Uh, which obviously broadens it up to the other side of scratch. I think it comes down to what is the goal here. And there's a discussion here about workability. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that kind of will clue people into why black over gold? Well, I mean, when we mentioned the blue, they talk about seven irons, which is an interesting decision based on what clubs you're actually playing, right? So as we alter loft, as we alter club design, your seven iron distances are going to change even for the higher handicap players. So even though this one moves into that zero to 12, their basis uh, from what Piper's telling us is if you hit a seven iron about 165 yards, where the blue was 150. Um, but again, what irons are we hitting? What type of player are we dealing with? That handicap range is gonna play a big role here, don't you think? I, yeah, I mean, we've seen three very similar shots from a number spin standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, I think best thing to do now is to switch to gold uh, as you'll see some product come up on the screen. And the gold's an interesting story with it because here's their seven handicap or less golf ball, right? We moved to a four piece design now, still urethane cover, um, still touting a softer overall feel compared to the Serlin ball, especially I would imagine. And this is about distance and a higher ball flight as well. Well, I'll hit a few James and we'll see what the truth is. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty well struck. That one should tell a good story for us here. Very, the numbers on the screen. Yeah, fairly similar to the bunch from a swing perspective. Really, I've only hit one a little bit fat and one a little bit left. Everything else has been pretty close, from uh, at least from a results standpoint. Uh, this is a four-piece urethane cover yep. as opposed to the black, which is a three-piece. It's super challenging to say I can really sense the difference, um, but that one did feel good when I hit it. So what do you think about the three piece, the four piece to the Serlin. Do you, do, you, do you personally see a difference when you hit 
So I mean, that kind of lineup? We get back into into skill level and what type of golfer is going to play it if you're going to be able to notice that much of a difference, especially compression-wise, which we don't know the compression story here for each of the golf balls. Um, again, that comes back to them really hinging their story on handicap and honestly seven iron distance, which this one classifies right back in that 165 yards seven iron is what they're touting. So. I don't know. I mean, most people are not going to be able to tell so much. Uh, what are you feeling through impact wise? Yeah, it's hard. It's challenging. Um, obviously, it was a great spin number there. I put a good move on the ball. I'm curious to see by comparison to the others what the peak height sample is because they've made mention of hitting higher shots with some than others. They talked about spin, which obviously applied pretty well for the blue. Uh, I think we'll hit what one more, maybe, maybe two more. I think that'd be a good sample, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it feels crunchy, which is what you're looking for with a ball. Uh, you get that four-piece experience as I almost hold this out. Yeah, maybe this is the ball for me, James. Maybe <laughs> gold's the one. right there, yeah. <laughs> uh, 9,200, yeah, I don't know there's too much more to, to talk about from a wall and swinging perspective. A nice way to finish it up. Uh, peak, again, is in that 43. I, I say we go to table view at this point, and maybe you can walk through my numbers and see what we see. I think it'll be a good idea to take a look at everything all together. All right, cool. And welcome to table comparison view with uh, Dan and James here. James, there are three balls we've hit, Piper Blue, Piper Black, and Piper Gold. Uh, what is the most telling thing here? Obviously, there's a range, Blue being 1999, Black being 2399, and Gold being 2799. Is this presenting to your expectations what you thought coming into it? Well, in particular, the blue with the Serlin cover did exactly what we would expect to see. Uh, I mean, with, with that type of design of golf ball, you're going to see a little less overall spin. And, and with that, your peak height is actually going to come up, which we don't have displayed right here on this. But uh, for those at home, the peak was, was the highest with the blue coming in at about 43. Uh, yards for Dan as he hit these and that's why our, our overall carry distances kind of equate out and we ended up with that 166 which is pretty much spot on the other two golf balls it's I, all about how you get to it I think we need we, we need to talk a little bit briefly about that I'm a high spin guy mm -hmm. and it's represented here uh, obviously an eight iron in play this is not surprising to me but I'm also a high ball guy so 43 for me is in the realm of reality uh, and then you compare the other two black at uh, 40 peak uh, on average and then gold at 42 i think it's pretty interesting to note that the the gold did go higher when the note on the box says extreme distance and higher flight and i think that actually applies both with the launch but on top of that the ball speed there was a little bit more action there yeah and you could tell when when we worked into the gold and the black and you started hitting and you could tell the difference in compression overall uh, so to see the jump in spin was was in line with what they talk about in, tar in terms of you know high spin rate and maximal playability for the golfer in that what we're dealing with zero to 12 range overall through those two balls one is zero to seven and the other one is zero to 12. Uh, so the data kind of matches up with what we'd expect there. Now I want to circle back a little bit on the designed for concept here though so obviously we don't have greenside discussion that we can apply here which plays a big role with things like urethane versus Serlin, the action around the greens, and obviously cover wear is always a big story in a golf ball. But I think it's pretty clear if I'm hitting eight irons all day, I, I would really struggle to justify the variance unless I was focusing on one or two things. Obviously the maximum performance says gold for me, but the blue's a very playable ball and I'm a low handicap. So I think as much as it's a nice guideline, James, I think it's pretty fair to say that for those out there trying to pick one, it might be just as well to get all three to try. Definitely, especially when you're dealing with companies that hit these price ranges. But with the blue being that five to 15 handicap, the real story is gonna come in with, when we get closer to the green, what are those golf balls doing for you and your game? Do you, are you a player who sees the ball release? Are you a player who's really big on trying to get as most the most check that they can as possible? Uh, that's the rest of the story there. Well, we've seen what they do. I think everyone should go out and try them for themselves. Let us know what you think about it. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe for more content, which we are putting out regularly for you to enjoy. And let us know what your thoughts are on Piper golf balls.